one thing that I am a bit paranoid about and scared of is the possibility of Israel conducting some type of false flag operation, either on some U.S. bases or a U.S. ship, or maybe even uh, in, on American soil itself. Am I being paranoid in thinking that, or do you think that's a possibility? Well, no, I wouldn't say paranoid, because, of course, the USS Liberty probably was a false flag. You know, there's it's hard to understand why they did it, but they, like the, the theory that makes the most sense it was that it was an attempted false flag. They were going to sink the ship and then blame it on Egypt. Uh, I, you know, that's the most convincing explanation. And of course, they do have a history of false flags. There was the Levon affair in 1956. Um, so, no, it's not paranoid. I don't know. I don't know if they could pull it off, um, but it seems like they can do anything. It's just like, again, it's just that even if we know, just like we knew the USS Liberty, what it was, we decided to look the other way. So they could do a false flag and Biden and Harris would look the other way. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's a paranoid. The reason you know, I'm saying a, that a is because when I watch, idea. <laughs> right? I mean, what, what keeps on getting pumped into the mainstream news here in the United States is that Iran is is got its uh, agents, provocateurs here in the United States that. Iran was behind an assassination plot on Trump uh -huh. um, and that these protesters, when Netanyahu came off, Netanyahu said they're likely being funded by Iran. This idea that Iran is inside the United States is yeah. something that is being pushed out by right. the Zionist propaganda machine in Israel. And so it just right. makes me feel like they're gearing up for the possibility of uh, of doing something, some type of action. Be like, look, it was Iran that did this. And mm -hmm. it, it just it's just. It's Israel's M.O. We know they've done these false flags. You, you told me, me about when they dressed up as uh, British uh, personnel in Egypt and, and killed um, <clears throat> killed people to start, uh, killed British soldiers right. that, that was to right. try to start a war. Right. And then they were uncovered. Right. That's the, right. Right. the Levant affair. Right. affair. And it's recognized. You know, everybody, even the U.S., yeah, recognizes that, yeah, that that's what happened. Um, yeah. So Right. So they have yeah, a history yeah, the, of doing this in the past. Right. right. They have done it. Yeah, yeah. The thing is just absurd that that Iran <laughs> has, uh, yeah, plots and agents in the U.S. You know, really, I, I'm sorry, but there, I don't think there's a single. I'm not aware of there being a single incident, you know, of uh, any sort of terrorist or attack, attack, or even a you know a, a plot to commit a terrorist attack on the part of Iran in the United States. Um, it just hasn't happened. On, on the other hand, you know, we've done all kinds of things, you know, directly, like in the case of Soleimani, where we assassinated like the, the the most popular military leader in their country, a real hero of the people there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, often through proxies like the um, the Mujahideen uh, al-Qaq, that, that terrorist group that we've used to um, to conduct terrorist acts on many terrorist acts over the years in Iranian soil. And then of course Mossad has 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 assassinated many nuclear scientists. Uh, pipelines have been broken up. There was that bombing at a at the commemoration actually ceremony for the you know marking the the um the anniversary of the death of Soleimani. It's it's it's, it's an ongoing thing. It happens all the time. I mean we we talk about Iran as being the, the leading sponsor of terror in the world or the Middle East. It's just total nonsense. You know, if anything, they're the leading victim of terror that has generally been carried out by Israel and the United States. There was a time, you know, like back again when, when they took the hostages in the early years of the Islamic Republic when they did engage in terrorism. And but it's just in that, that that's the old Iran. That's the revolutionary Iran. Uh, Iran. And, but they they have since then they have grown up. They've matured. They've actually proven to be a very um, very civilized member of the um, you know nation among the uh, among the nations of the world now. No, yeah, no. I have the more I learn about. What's happening, the more respect I have for Iran, the amount of restraint they show, the maturity they show, just 
and just the ability to do the constant suffering of their people and they take it on the chin and they try to sue for peace and they're trying everything they can to avo- avoid war but they just keep on getting poked keep on getting poked yeah. it's just like constant little jabs in the face and then like hey right. hit back hit back and then Iran will maybe push back a little bit, stop. And then Israel's like, oh, no, well, uh, help me, America. What's happening? You know, this <laughs> evil terrorist nation. It's disgusting. It really, yeah, that's what it, it is. is. Yeah, right. The whole oh, world. <laughs> I, I, I feel well, like I after I, right, right. World War that, II. Right. Oh, all right, go go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying things, um, things have really changed. I, um, I think a lot of people... Uh, around the world are much more sympathetic with Iran now than they there must be a much higher percentage than it was a decade or two ago um, and you know, recent events have, have certainly increased sympathy for Iran and increased hostility towards Israel and you can see it within the Middle East I mean now there used to be a time when there was a you know a great alliance arrayed of Middle Eastern countries Arab countries arrayed against Iran but that's over Right, you know, thanks to the Chinese mediation efforts, mm-hmm. there really is peace. And um, yeah, Saudi Arabia has already said that they're they've closed their airspace. You know, they're they're, they're not going to let. Um, in other words, that the Israel and the Western forces are not going to be able to use their airspace to carry out attacks on Iran. Egypt has has also said that it's not it's it's neutral in in past conflicts and in Jordan too this is something that we were talking about a few episodes ago you know remember back in April Jordan actually helped out even um, joined that um, that fleet of uh, joined that coalition of uh, fighters that that fired on the approaching drones and missiles this time they say no we're staying out of it and you know and keep out of our airspace that's the last I heard I'm sure they're having their arms twisted but they don't want to they don't want to be involved and that shows you again that you know things are shifting and they're shifting in the favor you know popular opinion and 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 um but more than popular opinion, I think popular opinion has been with Iran more or less for a long time. But now even, you know, the governments of the region are starting to, if it not entirely align themselves with Iran, they're no longer, uh, you know, no longer against them. And they're not aligning themselves with Western forces. Right. That changes things. This is just a new balance of power in the Middle East. Right. And another thing that I think is very likely to happen once this whole war kicks off is that we will see uh, an uprising in the West Bank, in Jordan, um, in Egypt. I don't think you'll be able to contain uh, the, the, this in around Israel, the, the countries around Israel. I mean, like Jordan is supposedly allied with the United States, but half of you've been to Jordan, I've been to Jordan. Yeah. Half of Jordan is Palestinian. They're all right. half of them are right. people in Jordan right. are people that have been kicked out of their homes in, yeah, in Palestine. Yeah. Um, and it, it, every taxi driver in Jordan is Palestinian. Yeah. Right. I don't think there's you will find a right. non-Palestinian right. taxi driver in Jordan. <laughs> I mean, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so right. and well, yeah, so a, yeah, you go thing. you go to Jordan, you, you you'll see. And right. I believe even King Abdul, I think, is his wife's a Palestinian. I believe. Um, you know, there's a. Yeah. But he's the, the the king of Jordan yeah. is is a bit of a you know a blowhard. Yeah, well, but the thing is that he's aware um, of this. And but that, yeah, so so he went to Tehran apparently and begged the Iranians not to retaliate. And and the reason he did is that he realizes you know the fix that he's in, uh, that his people are there. You must sense that seething anger you know beneath them. And it's like, okay, we, we made that. It was a close call back in April. But, but maybe this time, if another, you know, um, if this if we have a real war, I don't think I'm going to be able to, you know, <laughs> I maintain my rule. You know, I, I don't There's think no I way. Can There's no I way. Can, uh, right. I don't the think I'll keep it down. Blood is boiling. Right. And that's the <laughs> same thing in Egypt. That's why, again, the Egyptians before, they made it clear that they weren't supporting Israel and the U.S. this time around. Because I'm sure that Sisi is, is worried, too. You know, he's his people, too, are right. got to be just seething with anger. And it could blow up on it. It could blow up both in, in Egypt and Jordan. Right. Yeah, I think people need to realize that are in the West that 
when they watch the news, they all they see is October seventh over and over again. It is all this this narrative building and, to try to paint Israel as the victim constantly. Right, and, but the rest of the world is seeing the the truth, and the videos and kind, are coming out twenty four seven to all these people in the Middle East. They can see that they're seeing children that are, are are blown apart daily, and they're seeing you know kids being shot. The, the, all these horrific stories, uh, videos of prisoners. That there's, I saw a video release of the of a, of a Palestinian prison camp where they're raping prisoners. You know, like just awful, awful things that are just going in twenty four seven. How long can people watch this and not eventually have some type of reaction to the war? So it's yeah. people need to realize that tensions are super high for all these people across the Middle East because they are seeing what's happening to their fellow Arabs, their fellow Muslims, fellow Christians constantly. Mm. So I, it's going to blow up. Yeah. I, I uh, were, were you going to say something? I feel like you're... Oh, um, well, I was just going to add, you know, you said that here in the U.S. we see October the 7th is replayed again and again. I, mean, I think you, you need to say that it's a distorted version of October 7th. It's not quite so black and white as they try to make it out to be. Um, you know, the, again, the, the, it's even admitted, right? It's come out in, in Israeli media that a lot of those deaths were caused by the IDF, as we mentioned earlier. But of course, so, you know, even these, these stories, they leak, make it into the Western news, but they don't make it into the mainstream. It's not part of the narrative, you, you know, if you're, if you're not paying attention, you'll still still believe the original version, and it'll be repeated to you again and again. You might even believe right. beheaded babies or something, stuff that was you know debunked long, long ago. Right. Or, or rapes. Just yeah. just think about it. The idea that Hamas would come out and they would have time to start just raping people. It's just absurd. You know, yeah. they, they they have no it's, there's no incentive. It just doesn't make any sense. You know, yeah. it, the whole. It's, you know, and it's and the, the Hannibal that, directive right, that was right, enacted right. that, like you said, yeah, I was just ahead. saying that the Hannibal directive that was enacted on October 7th, um, you know, Israeli media bro even reported on that, broke that story. But the Western media will not talk about right, it. Right. They will not talk about that. You know, like right. there was a White House reporter that was asking, saying, well, you know, Haaretz came out mm. with this story about the Hannibal right. Directive, and it looks like maybe the majority of civilians were killed by the IDF. And he's like, oh, oh, oh well, <laughs> that's just absurd. Oh, we know about yeah, that. No, I, Don't yeah, even, that, we know that. Uh, yeah, but it, yeah. it was a joke. It was, yeah. You know what I'm talking about, that video. Yeah, yeah, I, I've seen the same video. I saw the same press conference. I know what you're talking about, yeah. Mm. It's crazy. Okay, well, we're coming up close to an hour, so yeah. maybe we can end here. Is there anything you want to add? I know we didn't touch on Ukraine at all or anything else right. that's happening in the world, but yeah, uh, well, there is a there is an incursion into um, the Kursk region of Russia uh, by Ukrainian forces. You know, there have been these incursions periodically, and most of them have been very small and in disaster. This seems to be a bigger one, and it's not really clear what's going on because I'm seeing conflicting reports. Like the Ministry of Defense says that everything's contained. They've been pushed back. They're all on the Ukrainian side. But then uh, Rebar, which is a, is a, you know, one particular news source that, uh, on the Russian side has said that they've actually penetrated 10 kilometers and um, into Russian territory in the Kursk region. Um, I, you know, it, it's, yeah, you, we'll see. I, I, I think, you know, I'm sure that it's going to fail. I'm very confident it is that it, it may have already failed, um, but it may be, you know, they'll, they'll manage to, to seize a little bit of territory and hang on to it for a few days, maybe even up to a couple of weeks. But, if, but uh, I would bet that that sooner than two week, weeks, it'll all be over. The Ukrainians will have suffered very heavy losses, and will again will have nothing to show for the effort. You know that's been the 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 history of these incursions on the northern border there. Yeah, I did see a little something about that in the news, but I haven't been paying too close attention. Um, well, maybe we can dive into it a little bit deeper or okay. some right. when we get a little bit more information, maybe on the next podcast. Um, okay. 
if, if we'll see what happens. I mean, if 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 Iran has struck uh, Israel, I don't yeah, think we'll don't, be talking yeah, about Ukraine right. <laughs> doing that on Friday. But uh, um, <clears throat> okay, well, thanks a lot, Dad. Um, I'll let you go, and uh, okay. hope you're still having a good time over there in Moscow. Yeah, I am. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Bye.